Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. For the last few days, from day number 81, we began dealing with the notion of ratio and proportions. Today we'll do a few ratio problems, a couple of them easy ones. First, first two problems we'll do are going to be quite simple, quite easy ones. And then we'll do a couple of the medium questions on the concept of ratio. The first problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It says we have three business people, we have three business partners, and these three business partners, we are told, had agreed to share the profit of thirty-six thousand dollars in the ratio of three to four to five. The question simply is, what's the least share if they had agreed to share the profit of thirty-six thousand dollars in the ratio of three to three to four to five? Let's find out, shall we? Let's give them names so that it's easier to speak about them. A, B, C. Let's call them. And the share is right here, 3 to 4 to 5. So let's first figure out what the total parts are. Always figure out what the total parts are. 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 5 is 12. So that makes it easy. 12, 12 parts total. And we know that they have a profit of 36,000. 36,000 we know equals 12 parts equals 12 parts, which implies that each part must be worth three thousand dollars each part is worth three thousand dollars just divide both sides by twelve and that's it we're done very simple they're looking for the least part this is the part that you have to pay attention to make sure make sure you answer what is being asked uh, otherwise you're going to end up there's a chance of making a careless mistakes they're not looking for the most share the least share is what they're looking for the least share is the guy is going to be with the with the, uh, with the with the three parts and each part is worth three thousand so he's going to get nine thousand dollars this guy is going to get twelve thousand dollars, and the most part, if they were asking, most part would have been five times twelve thousand, five times twelve thousand, and he would have gotten not twelve thousand. Sorry, I was going to say five times twelve thousand is sixty thousand. How can it be sixty thousand? The total is thirty-six thousand. Five times three thousand, and he's going to get fifteen thousand dollars. And you see it makes perfect sense. This guy is going to get $9,000, this guy is going to get $12,000, this guy is going to get $15,000. And it's a quick check, if you were to add them up, you will see that they, add, they will add up to 36, they will add up to 36,000. 7 plus 6 is 36, carry 1 and 36. That takes only 2 seconds and it's worth doing it as an insurance in the real exam. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Questions of these nature should take no more than a few seconds. That's it. We are told that ratio of 4 to 7 is equal to is equal to 24 to what? Again, very straightforward question. The ratio is 4 to 7, and we are told that that ratio will have to be the same as the ratio of 24. To what? Well, it's very simple. Ask yourself, what what do we need to do to 4 to make it 24? What times 4 equals 24? The answer is 6. The answer is 6. Now, since we, since we multiply the top by 6, we have to multiply the bottom by 6. In other words, we are taking the ratio of 4 to 7. We are taking the ratio of 4 to 7. We are not doing anything to it. It's still 4 to 7. We are simply multiplying it by 1. Except 1 takes the form of 6 over 6. So, there is your answer. The bottom must be 6 times 7, which is 42 which is 42. No need to make a fuss about it. Let's move on. Number three. Number three is not an easy question. It's a little bit tricky. We'll take a look at it. Number three, we are, we are preparing, we are sharpening our math skill, regardless of which exam that you're preparing for, whether you're preparing for ACT or SAT or TES or GMAT or GRE, these questions are very similar to each other. And uh, the difficulty level here, the problem that we're about to do, will not, will not, uh, this question will not qualify as an easy question what we are about to do regardless of which exam you are preparing for. Here is the question. It will qualify most likely as a medium question. Here is the question. If the ratio, if the ratio of x to y is 3 to 4, which of the following could be true. Which of the following could be true? 
here are the answer choices a a tells us that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3 quarter b tells us that x is equal to 3 halves and y is equal to 2 c tells us that x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 5 and d tells us that x is equal to 12 x is equal to 12 and y is equal to 9 and e tells us that x is equal to 9 and y is equal to 16 what I want you to do what I want you to do right now is to pause the video unless unless you have solved the problem already but if you have not solved the problem already as I was writing it pause the video do it yourself once you have the answer and then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time and do that every time make it a habit you will always find that you will get a hell of a lot more out of your exercises if you were to do the problem if you were to attempt the problem yourself first go ahead and do it I'm going to give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video, to be able to pause and unpause the video, okay? Here we go. All right. Is it true? Zero and three quarter? The answer is no. X x over y, x over y, if x were zero, if 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 x if x were zero, we say were because we are speaking hypothetically if one is speaking hypothetically, if x were 0, we would have had 0 over 3 quarter, 0 divided by any number is 0. That, that, that ratio is not same as 3 to 4. That ratio is not same as 3 to 4. That answer is wrong. How about b? How about b? Let's take a look at b. b says 3 halves, 3 halves over 2. Oh, what do you know? I should not have done the b right away. This is our x, this is our x, and this is our y. 3 half divided by 2, which of course is the same as 2 over 1. We're making, I'm making too much fuss now, you're, you're right. It's 3 halves times 1 half, one half is going to be, because it's 2 over 1, and it, and it is 3 over 4. 3 over 4 is what we're looking for. What's wrong, what's wrong, with, what's wrong with C? What's, who's, going to pick, who's going to pick C for the answer? What's going on in C? What's, it's always a good idea, even after you find the right answer, ask yourself what might have gone through the mind of the person who had picked the wrong answer. Make sure you understand their thinking, their logic, so that you don't end up doing the same mistake yourself. What they are thinking is this. We know the ratio is 3 to 4. So they take the ratio of 3 to 4 and they, they, their rationale is that as long as we add the same number to top and bottom, it becomes 4 to 5 and therefore this is the same as what is given to us, which of course is not. 4 to 5 is not same as the the it's not same as 3 to 2. Very simple, very simple ratio. If you had one to, uh, if you have a ratio of 1 to 2, and if you were to add 1 to the top and 1 to the bottom, you end up with 2 thirds. 2 thirds is not same as what we started out with. A ratio of 2 thirds is not same as 1 half, obviously. Just because you add same number to top and bottom, does not mean the ratio stays the same. Ratio changes. It's only when you multiply the top and bottom by the same number, that the ratio does not change. What's wrong with D? You know what's going on? D is going to be probably one of the most popular wrong mistakes here. What's going on with D? We have 12, we have 12 over 9, and if you divide top and bottom by, if you divide top and bottom by 3, 12 becomes 4 and 9 is going to become 3, and this is the answer that's going to be picked by, listen very carefully, this is going to be the answer that's going to be picked by people. These are the people, these are not the people who simply don't understand the concept, they understand the concept quite well. This is a sort of mistake that can be made by anybody, including myself. When you are in haste, when you're doing something, curse, when you're reading it cursorily, you might end up picking this wrong answer in a haste. You forget that the original answer is 3 to 4, not 4 to 3. D is the reciprocal of the correct ratio. D is the reciprocal of the correct ratio, and you might miss that, as I said, if you read the problem cursorily. What's wrong with E? E it simply takes the 3 to 4 ratio, E simply takes the 3 to 4 ratio and simply squares the top and bottom. Of course, squaring the top and bottom will of course change the ratio. You have to simply look at a simple scenario. If you have a ratio of 1 to 10 or 1 to 2, and if you were to square it, it becomes 1 to 4. Or if you have a ratio of 1 to 10, and if you square top and bottom, it becomes 1 to 100. Of course, it changes the ratio. E is also wrong. The answer is B. The answer is B. Let's move on and do, let's do one more, shall we? Let's, let's go on and do one more.
there is a word that I just used and I want to make sure that we learn that word. We used that word I think two or three times. The word is cursory. What does it mean to do something in a cursory manner? I'm looking at the list of the words here, index in my in, in my index under C, to see which day we learned the word in our vocabulary lesson so that I can give you the day. Just give me one second and I'll find it. Because uh, if you try to do it in a hurry, it takes longer. Oh, very good. Day number 22. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in whichever test that you're preparing for, SAT Vocabulary Words Day 20 or GRE Vocabulary Words Day 20, and the video will pop right up. Watch the video where we learned the word cursory. Cursory means to do something in haste, and the adverb of cursory would be cursorily. Just like haste, to do something in haste is to do something hastily. To do something in a cursory manner is to do something cursorily. So if you read it cursorily, it is quite possible that you might end up picking the reciprocal of the original ratio that is given to us, and that happens. That can happen to anybody. It's just a matter of paying attention. It's just a matter of concentrating. That's all it is. Let's do one more, shall we? We are told that uh, we are told that 1,000, rather 100,000 tons of sand must be must be processed to produce 6000 barrels of oil One, 100000 100000 tons of sand must be processed to produce 6000 barrels of oil don't ask me how they produce how they extract oil from sand i have no idea that's what we are told. Question is, how many tons? How many tons of sand are required to produce three million? Three million barrel. How many tons are required? How many tons of sands are required if you wish to extract 3 million barrels of oil? And here are the answer choices. Point 0.5 billion, point 0.5 billion or 5 billion or 50 billion or 500 billion or if you like that's it that's all the answer choices how much how much sand do we need to process in order to be able to extract 3 million barrels of oil given the fact that it takes 100,000 tons of sand to extract 6,000 barrels of oil do the problem yourself, pause the video one more time, do the problem yourself, and then when you have the answer, you can resume the video. Do you understand? All right, here we go. First of all, we realize right away, we realize right away that this is not a ratio problem anymore. This is a proportion problem. How do we know it's a proportion problem and not a ratio problem? We talked about it, the, the difference between the concept of ratio and proportion on day number 81. When we begin the series, today is our day number 86, lesson number 86. On day 81, we talk about the conceptual difference between ratio and proportions. Proportions deal with unlike things, two, two different things. The two different things that we're dealing with here, two different things that we're dealing with here are 100 tons of sand. We're dealing with sand. This must be processed to produce 6,000 barrels of oil. We're dealing with sand and oil. And we are told that we have to process 6,000 barrels of, we have to process 6,000 barrels Oh, sorry, we have to process 100,000 tons of sand, 100,000 tons, so 100,000 goes on the top, 100,000 to produce 6,000 barrels of oil. The question is, how much sand we need to process, how much sand we need to process in order to have 3 million barrels of oil? That's all it is. That's all it is. Quite simple, 
straightforward. Make sure you pay attention because that's all it is. It's, mi it's a matter of miss missing one digit. And if you want to mix, miss, miss, one, miss it by one digit, you're going you're gonna to end up getting a wrong answer. Let's do it together, shall we? So x equals, if we cross multiply here, x will equal 100,000 times 3 million. 100,000 times 3 million over 6,000. Let's do it on the top. One hundred thousand times three million over six thousand. So the thousand part is very annoying. We can get rid of it right away. Divide top and bottom by thousand, and that takes care of this zero. We have to divide this six, and that's gonna, that six is going to go with this part here, which means we have to we have to write this thing in a different way. Instead of writing three million, instead of writing three million, let's write that as three times ten to the six. And we learned this part also. I don't remember which day it was, but there was a day where we spent the time to learn our millions, our billions, and our trillions. Look for a video, look for a video in the series with the heading of million, billions, and trillions. And we know that a million is 10 raised to 6. So we have 3 on the top, we have 6 on the bottom, let's divide top and bottom by 3. We divide top and bottom by 3, 3 goes away and 6 becomes 2. And now we have 2 on the bottom, we have 100 on the top, let's divide top and bottom by 2. So 2 goes away and 100 becomes 50. That's it, that's our answer. 50 times 10 raised to 6. 50 times 10 raised to 6. And if that's the answer, then something has gone wrong. If that's the answer, then something has gone wrong. Yes, something has gone drastically wrong. 50 times 10 raised to 6 is 50 million. That answer twice is not there. Ah. That answer choice is not there. I have made a mistake. I made a mistake here. It's 50 times 10 raised to 6. 50 times 10 raised to 6. 50 times 10 raised to 6. 50 times 10 raised to 6 is 50 million. These have to be millions. Million, 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 million. And the answer is 50 million. The answer is C. The answer is C. some reason in my notes. Anyway, let's not worry about what I did here, but there was a mistake there. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.